Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. We're here today at the old par docks. Um, I say the old par docks, it is kind of still in operation. Um, Emirates do still have trains that come here. Um, I'm not sure that this is going to be a an interactive video or whether it's just a ju just going to be a bit of history really but um par docks has got some pretty incredible history in, in cornwall so um i i think it's only fair that there we go there's the emiris docks here par docks now par docks is owned by emiris Um, I have done some, I'm not going to go any further than here. I have done a bit, a little bit of research and history on the place, so I shall read that out, out to you in a minute. Whoops, it's all right, so carry on. People coming in and out with boats. There is a slipway just down over there. Um, and Par Docks does have its own fishing club. There you go, let private property access by fish, access and fishing by permit holders only. So I'm not actually allowed on to Imrest or on to the... I wasn't sure how the internet worked down here, so um, I got some information here that I wouldn't, wouldn't mind reading off to you. Um, Par Docks is an Imrest owned harbour in the village of Par which was used to export China clay from numerous Imrus sites in the clay-rich regions of Mid-Cornwall. Joseph Trifray, Trifray, I'm sorry if I destroy that name, was the owner of the Foy Consoles Mines and wanted a harbour to export copper and import coal. Now work was started on the harbour in 1829 the first ship started to use it in 1833 and it was finished by 1840. So there's some serious, you know, 150, 160 years of history to the place. Um, the breakwater enclosed 36 acres of harbour and it was capable of taking up to 50 ships weighing 200 tonnes each. Um, Cornish granite was exported from Par in the early days um, and it, they went for, for such famous landmarks as Waterloo Bridge, Chatham Docks, Gibraltar Docks and the docks at Glasgow. Um, as China clay industry grew during the 19th century, it, this became the main export through Par Docks. Um, according to Imrus Blueprint for Cornwall, which was published in 2003, in 1858, 15,154 tonnes of China clay went through the docks, which working it out is 41.5 tonnes per day, every single day, including Christmas Day. So in 1858, you had 51 and a half tonnes. Um, of China clay that was being exported from this dock on a daily basis, um, which is pretty, pre I mean, you know, um, that was 1858. 1885, there was 86,325 tonnes, which is 236 and a half tonnes per day. Uh, 1987, there was 700 tonnes which is 1,917 tonnes per day. Um, in 2002, 313,425 tonnes of China clay and 134,810 tonnes of aggregates were shipped from here. Um, the Trifray Estates sold the harbour to English China Clay in 1964, um, having leased it to them since 1946. 
In the 50s and 60s, vast dryers were installed on site. The current grade dryer was built in 1996. Now, I think the current dryer is that building there, but I'm not 100% sure. I did try to find some overhead pictures online with the, with the pictures, but I, I couldn't. Um, it, it may well be that building over there. I'm hoping that when I get the drone up, it might give me some kind of better idea as to what's what. Um, in 2007, the port and some of the clay dries, um, which dealt with the clay for the paper industry, closed with a loss of 200 jobs. Um, all shipping for clay now leaves from Foy Docks, which is way down that way. Um, but Par Docks is still the site of the milling centre and the grade dryer. Um, now the milling centre, milling is a process of grinding particles to decrease their size by using a drum that's filled with pebbles. Um, either porcelain or some sort of stone, like flint, for example. Um, and it, 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 the, the, it, it basically just breaks it down to make it easier to, to handle and transport. Um, the grade dryers are used to make the... All oh right, the grade dryers are used to make the china clay easier to handle and it helps reduce transport costs. Um, kaolin, which is actually the correct name for china clay, um, it's commonly used in paper making, tableware in China, medicines, pigments and paints, rubber, fertilizers, refractories, fiberglass, and technical ceramics, technical ceramics, as well as other consumer products such as cosmetics, toothpastes and creams. So there we go, there's a little bit about the history of the place for you. And what I shall do, I think I shall take the drone up from here um, and just see what we can see, really. It might take me a, a minute to set my drone up. I've come from home, so I haven't already got my drone set up in the bag like I sometimes do. It's quite a busy road, this, so I'm hoping that the the road noise doesn't interfere too much with the microphone. Right, I will just show you drone assist a minute. It's just so that you can see that it's perfectly okay to fly from here. Right, there's drone assist. And there I am. There. And as you can see, there's absolutely nothing around for miles. So we're perfectly cool to, to take off from here. And take off is permitted. So let's... And we are recording. Right, so, let's go up over our docks. And see what we can see. <laughs> I'm going to take it up a little bit. I think we need some... slightly bigger um, pictures here. So I think that long building there <laughs> was the drying, um, the, the, the drying house. Um, I think it was pretty much laid out and then um, just turned and turned and turned. Um, and, until it was dried out. Um, I did try to find out a little bit more, but I couldn't find out too much more, really. Uh, 
So yeah, there's the um, and there is a train track there. That train track is still in use. Um, they do still transport from here to Foy to be delivered. Oh, there you go. The, I, I was about to say that I did see the, the train leaving earlier on. Um, but as you can see, the train is still there, parked up, presumably waiting for the next um, signal to change so that they can get past. But yeah, there's the there's the Imaris train, and it has got Imaris stamped on all of the um, all of the the carriages. Sorry, mine blank. Couldn't think what they were called. So yeah, I think that's the old building there. We're coming into a slightly newer building, which is still, uh, it does appear to be attached to this building. So I'm not entirely sure what that is. I will try and... Spin round and see if that is attached. That's someone from Imaris there looking at me with a bit of the eye. So yeah, that that those two buildings are definitely attached there. Not sure whether that's a conveyor from one building to the other. There's a tank there. Is that excess waste, maybe? Getting rid of all of the dirty water to dry it up a wee bit. Oh, my camera's decided to reset itself. That's useful. Oh dear, oh dearie me. Alright, there we go, now we're back on the thing. So yeah, there's the wastewater. At least I'm assuming that it's the wastewater. There's a lot of lorries parked up there. One, two, three, four lorries parked up. Quite interesting. All the, the there's some big silos there. Look as well. We'll go and have a quick look at the harbour a minute. I have to take it right up to 120 metres, I think, to give it a bit of a chance of seeing something interesting. Right, there we go. We're up at 120 metres there now. So, yeah, apparently they reckon that there was 36 acres in, within the breakwater, um, which were taken off for 50 ships at 200 tonnes each. Um, and as I said, it was 1840 uh, when the, the, the harbour first opened. Good afternoon. Hi. All right. Yeah, you? Yeah, fine, thank you. Okay. Just got the drone up, taking a few pictures of the, of the yard. It's right. quite interesting. That's yeah, a private site, you shouldn't have gone over it. Um, I launched from Publix, so it's OK. Yeah. As long as you launch from pub, it, it to be it depends on the size of the drone. Yeah. 
a drone less than 250 grams can pretty much take off and fly from anywhere. Are you Mr. That's Coon? Private. No, he's not. No? No. no. That's, that's what it is, is it? So, yeah. Small drone. And what are you doing it for, Matt? Just... Um, it, it, it's it's a bit of a public interest video, really. You know, with it, I've done a. Oh, where did I put it? Nope, it's not there. I printed off some information about you know sort of when the I think it was 1833 was when it was first. All right, okay. And you're just doing it for. Uh, yeah, there you we post, go. Look. Where did you post it? To? Oh, 1929. Um, it's going to go up on YouTube eventually. All right. But yeah, it's just a bit about the. The, the old um, drying sheds and the old milling yeah. drums and all that kind of thing. Okay. So yeah, just thought it was quite interesting. Yeah, just just general stuff, not... Yeah. All right, mate. Not... Not for anything in particular. Just... Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not, not zooming in, filming number plates or security entrances or anything. No, okay. no, none of that, mate. Just I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually 120 metres up already. I'm up at full height, look. Yeah. So you're not going to see a face or a number plate from 120 metres no, up, no. buddy. So don't no, worry too much. No problem. All right, mate. Um, so w which is that big building? Is that, is that? That's Cam Bryan's store. That's a clay store. That's a clay store. Store, yeah. Right. Where's the drying room? The dryer is over behind it. Well, uh, that's the slightly newer building that's yeah, attached to it that used one. To be, yeah. So them over there that are the MC now. It's milling. That right. Used to be the dryer. Ah, right, okay, I'll pan round and have a quick look at that. It, it's all this kind of, you know, it's, it, it's an interesting thing for, for, for the Cornish, to, Cornish people to be able to view. Because you, you don't get to, to, the chance to see all this lot very often. No. You know, because obviously members of the public aren't al allowed on here. So it is, you know, um, the, the breakwater there is 36 acres. It could take 50 ships at 200 tons each when it was... So, you know, I've done, done a bit of research. Into, I'm, I'm not here to cause any trouble, guys. No worries, mate. I, I wasn't actually expecting anyone to bother coming out. I assume you'd be used to drones and whatever going up by now. Uh, we don't have many people like yourself flying. I'm glad you said people. Rather, I've been called some names in the past. So thank you for that, sir. That's right. <laughs> have a good day. Lovely, thank you very much, gents. Right, so yeah, we now know that. Let's get back over to it a minute. Uh, right, so now we know that that building there is the clay store. And that there, I think he said, was the was the um, milling. I think that's what he said. I will double check on the video and obviously change it if I have to. Um, and it sounds as if like all all of this now is all the drying. So yeah, it's um, it, it's quite a big site, guys. This one. I genuinely wasn't Max expecting Altieri. any interaction whatsoever today at all. But I mean, you 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 can you can see the sheer, sheer size of the place. Um, I mean, all of that belongs to Par Docks as well. I am going to come over and have a look at that as well in a minute. I'm slowly making my way over. Max altitude reached. I know max altitude is reached. You keep telling me that max altitude is reached. Max altitude reached. So yeah, max I Max altitude reached. All of this all belongs to 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 par max docks. Altitude reached. I know that max altitude's been reached. You don't have to keep telling me that. That's why I'm up there. So, yeah, we've got the old... Um, I think they used to call them grading tanks, the old water grading tanks. Um, it, it, each tank that the water went into, it would get slightly cleaner um, until it was clean drinking water, and then presumably it would go back into the, into the table, although I'm not 100% sure about that.
a few fishing boats, or little, uh, fishing boats. There's a few little pleasure craft boats in there, look. I'm not sure I'd like to get stuck underneath the, on this side because if you didn't catch the tide right, by the looks of it, I don't think you would get out from underneath there. There's a few more boats there, look. How do they get out then? There's obviously a... It's obviously underneath the... Um, under the roadway, I would guess. It doesn't look like a bridge to me. Yeah, that is, that goes, that disappears off underneath the, the thing and then out there. Along the harbour wall there. And then it's out into the breakwater and then you have the stunning, I'll put this back up to 120 metres a minute and I'll do the, uh, uh, a quick 360 for you. Paul Keris Beach over there. It's a nice little beach with um, water sports facilities for, for hire. Um, a pub and a cafe. That's Blackhead out there. Superb fishing spot, fantastic. Well, it used to be. Not sure what it's like now. I think everywhere's suffered with the with the fishing. Um, we've got a golf club there, that's um, Carlion Bay Golf Club I think. I'm not 100% sure which way Carlion Bay Golf Club goes but that is certainly a golf club. Top of St Austell there. Um, up there, I don't know if you can see it, but up there is the sky tip, which is um, pretty much seen for miles around from St Austell, or the 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 the, 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 the bay of St Austell. Got more houses there. So yeah, this is just a, a bit of a quick one as to what it looks like. Um, we're back at Blackhead again. So yeah, it's just a bit of useless information for you all. Obviously, is the main site there. And there's the entrance. And that's me. And standing there, walking around that you can see. They have still got security here <laughs> or they do still have emirates here i'm not sure whether they act as security or or whether they just got offices here
And there's the harbour office. So I want to come down and have a quick look at that. It's um, the building right in front of me, actually. I'll show you on the body cam now. There's the, the harbour office there. So we're not too far away from... In fact, the drone is right up above my head. I want to come, I want to get a picture of the harbour office. I think that would be quite a quite a nice picture to get. I have got to come forwards a bit because when I switch to the photograph it will only give me a two time zoom. So I would like to Oops, I forgot to zoom in. There we go. What I might try to do... I wouldn't mind getting a... a pick of what's going on here either. All the different bits and pieces and their workings as they go. There's a lorry there reversing in luck. I'd assume that China clay would be Well, I don't know. I didn't think you would load it into lorries like that, though. I thought it would have been like a bulk powder or something that they would have done. Right, I've got to get my drone back a minute because my battery's about to run out. like to get some shots of the the different buildings here and able to take off take off with caution no GPS Takeoff is permitted. Take off. Okay, so up we go again. I'm in sport mode, so I'm flying today. Going really quickly. I just want to try and get in the position as fast as I can, really, that's all. trying to line myself up to get all the right shots that I need really. Let's keep going a bit more. Alright, there we go.
now. I want to try and get one of the whole site, but I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to be able to because it's a huge site. I'm not even sure that 120 metres up will do very much. There's a lorry there that stood in right in front of me waiting for those lights to change there. Well, gone back a seriously long way. Right, I think that's it. So now, I just need to get my drone back. I wasn't expecting anybody to come out and have a chat, so I'm really, really happy and glad that they did decide to, to come out. It's really, really good news. Now, I got a little bit of information about what's where that was really nice of them they didn't have to do that so yeah got me drone back guys so yes everybody that was Pardox. I think I'm pretty much done now. Don't think there's that much else really that I can do here. Um, oh, something else that, that briefly should be mentioned. Um, there was a part played by par docks um, during the second world war um, i did pull up a it's just a single paragraph that i pulled up off the internet um, which i will try and find for you now to let you know Um, do, 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 do. Right. Here we go. Um, it, th th this is like like I said. This is just one brief paragraph. Um, just prior to D-Day, the area was teeming with Americans, and I saw a landing pontoon laid from Par Beach into the bay to practice beach landing nearly swept away on September, okay. just prior to D-Day, the area was teeming with Americans and I saw a landing pontoon laid from par docks into the bay to practice beach landings, nearly swept away on Boxing Day 1943 until a small boat towed it back to safety of the harbour. So yeah, there was, um, there were American soldiers here um, and it sounds as if they did practice the D-Day landings um, on Par Beach. Oh, there's some, there's some geese there, look. With their signets, that's very nice. Didn't notice those on the way in. Oh, that's very nice, that is. So, yeah. Anyway, everybody. I think that's probably it for this one. So, um... Please do like the channel and subscribe. Uh, please do feel free to comment on the video. Um, I'm sure there may be a few people that used to work here. Um, and you know, re remember the being in the buildings and whatever. So it would be great to, to hear any, any comments that you've got. Thank you very much everyone. Take care and I shall see you on the next one.